Today we're looking at 10 players. We're looking to buy, sell, hold, or trade in Dynasty Fantasy Football. We're looking at their player values. We're looking at what they can do next year and ongoing into the future. And looking at whether or not you need to be rostering them in Dynasty Fantasy Football. Before we do all that, you need to click that subscribe button because I'm going to help you build your Dynasty teams all year long into next year and going forward for the rest of your life. Click that button. Stop missing out. But we're going to start looking at our first player today, and it's Puka Nakua, a very polarizing rookie wide receiver. Right now in ADP, he's being valued as the wide receiver 7. 10th player off the board in ADP right now. That's per DynastyLeagueFootball.com. And if you look at the numbers there, a lot of wide receiver one weeks, a lot of double-digit fantasy performances. Very solid off the rip and he earned that draft capital in fantasy football but the question is are you buying selling or holding right now i think it's really hard to flip him on the market unless you're trying to move up strategically to a justin jefferson or you got some trade in the works that's pretty massive. I don't think you're really looking to move Puka Nakua unless something special is coming your way. But the theory with him is what are you doing in startup drafts? Is it him or Chris Olave? Him or Jalen Waddle? Who would you rather have? Is there another player that you want to pivot to? Do you want to do that? Are you locked into Puka Nakua? If I have him on my roster... I'm cool. I'm cool with him on my roster. I'm cool with him being there. I'm not looking to flip. I'm not looking to do anything drastic. I will kick the tires probably off and on throughout the summer, see if something comes back at me. But I know that he's not going to be very liquid right now because the price is high and the demand's not screaming like for like a Justin Jefferson or something like that for a player that high. So that being said, I'm not going to catch deals coming back at me that's going to be super advantageous considering where the player value is at. If I can get a top tier asset somewhere valued around the wide receiver 5 to 8 range, considering he's wide receiver 7 and ADP, cool, I'm smashing that. If I can get a top 10 player, cool, I'm smashing that. I don't think the odds are good for that. I don't think he's super liquid on the market, but you might catch somebody who's willing to build with a wide receiver like this. Am I looking to buy? No, because the price is too high. I look for him as more as a hold right now because the market is saying, hey, the price is up there. See what you can do with them, but it's not likely going to happen. I'm not going to buy him. I might catch him in startup drafts. That's where I'm going to try and get him the most. If I'm trying to move down from one of the top wide receivers, which I'm not really doing, then I might catch him in some more liquidity, some picks and players. But honestly, I don't see anybody doing that. I don't want to move on from my top wide receivers. I, I just don't want to do that. My goal is to get those wide receivers and hoard them as long as possible. For me, Puka Naku is a good stalemate, and I like having top-tier wide receivers on my roster. I can't have enough of them. And even if he drops in value, I know production is likely to happen next year and likely to be there going forward. So I'm not pressured to make any moves right now either way if the price drops i might be looking to buy considering what we saw this year but i just don't see that happening anytime soon and we'll readdress that when it does happen here on the channel anyways but we gotta move on to our next player here and it's sam laporta he is the tight end one per adp on dynastyleaguefootball.com very productive during his rookie season and he should be valued as the tight end one because not many tight ends come out during their rookie season and just hit that home run multiple tight end one weeks multiple double digit ppr fantasy performances and you do not see that going away anytime soon we look for him to be a valuable part of the offense for a long time the adp is up there the price tag is up there in startup drafts you might be pivoting to other positions at that point of the draft and that's fair and i'm not looking to trade him away from any of my teams if i can catch him at a discount I'll do it, but I don't see that happening either. I like Sam Laporta. I liked him coming out of the draft last year. I liked his price in the draft as well in rookie drafts as a second round option. I thought that was a good price tag for a tight end of his caliber. I think once we got to that part of the second round, he was a slam dunk pick to make considering that you had Dalton Kincaid in the first round. That was a high price tag for a tight end, but once you get to a part of the second round, when those top wide receivers and running backs start coming off the board, a guy like this is a slam dunk pick to make. But we're seeing a lot of production here, 14.1 PPR points per game. We should continue to see that going forward. 
And now we're looking at Nico Collins. He'll be a free agent in 2025. He's being valued as the wide receiver 22, being drafted as the 30th player off the board in startup drafts. Very productive last year with splash weeks, big time games. He won you some matchups. He was very productive. He missed some time due to an injury, but he was still very productive counting stat-wise, averaging 17.4 PPR points per game, locked in with C.J. Stroud. He gets those air yards. He gets those deep targets. Going to be consistent, but right now the price tag's kind of up there. Are you going to deal away from him? Probably not. You're probably not going to get anything coming back to you in return that's going to match the production right now. The market's saying it's going to be hard to deal him away right now. However, with him being up there in ADP, you got to be happy that he's on your roster. I love having him on my roster because he was such a cheap get last year. A free square pretty much, especially in redraft last year as one of the last picks. And he blew up to have a good season. In 2023, C.J. Stroud hit. He's linked with C.J. Stroud. I look for them to re-sign him. Even though he's going to be up there in age when that happens, I look for him to be on the Texans for the long term. I look for him to be a long-term play here for Dynasty Fantasy Football. Now we're going to Josh Allen. And there's not much to say about this. He's a top quarterback. Top quarterbacks are valued in Dynasty Fantasy Football. Am I buying, holding, or trading? Doing all of that, I'm just playing around with my leagues with a quarterback like this and super flex. I'm probably just holding him for the rest of my life unless I'm trying to work out some kind of deal where I'm just trying to get pieces to rebuild, retool, get my team better. He's not going to be a free agent until 2029. He's probably going to get re-signed anyways. He's a long-term asset in Dynasty Fantasy Football. A quarterback like this, especially in Superflex, is something you're trying to get. However, Cooper Cup is being valued as the wide receiver 28, about the 50th player off the board in ADP. He can be productive, but we're getting up there in age. He's over 30 years old. He'll be 31 next year, and he's a wide receiver that's getting hit with injuries as well. Is this a player you want to look into to build your dynasty team around? We're at wide receiver 28 right now. You can probably get like the wide receiver to 30 to wide receiver 35 price tag on the streets in the trade market. However, I tried to trade him in some leagues last season. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. That was before the injuries. That was before the chaos. It was him coming back, scoring 19 and 27 points per game there. Not happening. It was hard to get any deals done. I didn't get any deals done. People weren't trying to get Cooper Cup. They're not trying to get him now. I'm going to see people talk him up as a sell and die seat. They're looking at the age. They're looking at the price right now. He's a hold right now, considering what I'm seeing in my markets and my leagues, because no one's trying to buy him. And that was months ago when the market was a little bit hotter in season when people needed that production. They needed this guy to win games. They're like, you know what? We don't want him. I don't want him. We'll just take the loss. I'd rather just take the loss than have Cooper Cup. And that's in multiple leagues, not just a small sample. Cooper Cup, you can't really deal him. You're probably just holding. But if you're going to deal him, you're going to have to package him up with another player to move up to another player that's better. Or you're just going to have to bite the bullet and take a hit on value. Or you just hold him, enjoy the production while you still got it. Moving on to DeAndre Swift. RB15 and ADP, 2024 free agent. Where is he going to sign? He's tied to where he's going to be signing and whether or not he can be healthy. He was very healthy this year. Averaged 12.6 PPR fantasy points per game. Where he goes in free agency is going to be huge. That's going to be huge for his value. He's not a young running back anymore, but he's also not an old running back. We don't have a ton of mileage on him, but he's also a running back. Running backs are a dime a dozen. You got the top tier guys, the top three, the B. John Robinsons, the Brees Halls. Then after that, you're just playing money ball with your running backs. How cheap can you get DeAndre Swift? Can you get him cheaper than ADP 63? Can you get him at value at like the 75th player off the board, the 80th player off the board? Can you do that in your league? Can you swindle him? If not, you might want to stay away. If you got him on your roster, you may want to play around, kick the tires, see what comes back at you. Again, he's a running back. You're not married to running backs. You should not be married to running backs, especially running backs like this. we are starting to get up there in age. They're not garnered as one of the top running backs in the game. A running back's a running back in this day and age. And you got to just play the market in your league and play that money ball. 
Next is George Kittle, and he's being valued as the tight end seven. We've dealt with injuries off and on throughout his career, a little bit last year, but looking at the production here, looking pretty good. Multiple double-digit PPR fantasy performances. It's not enough to have multiple tight end one weeks because you can be a tight end one and score just eight fantasy points. But we got a lot of games here where we're hitting double digits. It's really going to help your lineup. And that's what he does. The down weeks, that's just part of the game. That's part of the tight end spot. But he's able to catch you some production. You're also catching him at a good part of the draft. 73rd player off the board on average. So 7th the 8th round depending on your league size, depending on what's going on in your draft. That's good production for what you're getting at the tight end spot. That's good value. Not set to be a free agent until 2027. There's an out for 2024. He's going to be a niner. He's going to be a niner for a good bit. You don't have to worry about that. He's a key component to that team. That being said, for the price tag here in startup drafts, I like it a lot. Really depends on what's else on the board. You may be pivoting the wide receiver or running back instead instead of him. But again, if you're looking for tight end, you want to go a shade cheaper and still get production. This might be the guy you're looking at. He's 30 years old, but we still have some upside as we saw from last year. Moving on to Ramondre Stevenson, being valued as the RB22 right now in ADP, being valued as the 80th player off the board, 78.67 to be exact, but around the 8th round range of running backs. He's a running back. We didn't have a good season last year. We did show some upside in the back half of the season. Maybe we can get that back from that magical 2022 campaign where it was top 3 in targets among running backs, but that was probably a one-hit wonder there. And the upside might not be as consistent anymore. He'll be a free agent in 2025. Running backs are a carousel. He's not considered one of the top running back talents in the league. If I could deal him and catch something back, like a decent pick, he's gone. He's gone. He's off my roster. If I can buy him on the cheap sometime during the rookie draft process, third, fourth round pick, which shouldn't happen, which shouldn't happen, which shouldn't happen, then I'm doing it. But if I can catch him for a discount during my rookie drafts, cool. Ramon J. Stevenson is not a guy I'm looking to get. He's a guy that I'll fall into because running backs are running backs. If he's cheap enough, cool. If I can deal him, cool. And that's about it. But Jacoby Myers, wide receiver 44, being drafted around 90th overall in startup drafts, pushing the 10th round, 9th round, 10th round in that area. We had some weeks last year where he was very productive. Some wide receiver two games, some wide receiver one games. Targets got funneled his way. He got a lot of targets when he was healthy, and he was getting air yards downfield. And that's something you got to like about Jacoby Myers. Even with Devontae Adams there, he's getting workload, and he signed with the team for a good bit. They got out on the contract in 2024, but he's a free agent in 2027. He's going to be there for some time adp has him up there a little bit but he's up and down depending on the month look for the value to possibly drop a little bit during rookie draft season here next few weeks and months that being said you might be able to strike a little bit better maybe in startup drafts maybe in trade but keep an eye on that keep an eye on his price tag because there is some in-season upside with Jacoby Myers, and then also in season, if he's being productive like we see down here in the chart, you may want to wheel and deal and try and get some picks out of him if you're looking to rebuild or retool to get more assets to your team. But we're going to Roshan Johnson right now, RB28, being drafted around the 100th player off the board in startup drafts. Very cheap buy right now in startup drafts, but in the actual trade market, no one's willing to unload him unless the deal is correct because the sunk cost fallacy and he's a young running back. This team's looking to get a new quarterback or they're going to build a lot more around Justin Fields. There's a lot of upside here. He had trouble taking over the backfield here in Chicago, but he was a rookie. We do have some upside with the athleticism, so some people are going to be patient with him. That being said, he's a hold even at this price. He's super cheap and affordable, but he's not very liquid. Why would I get rid of a running back like this for pennies on the dollar when I can just see what happens? What's the worst thing that happened? 
a year from now I'm selling him for like 150 ADP or something like that or I'm just letting him die on my roster or I'm just trading him in season what's the worst that can happen at this point if you really look at it this way so we're seeing if we can cash in on that upside six months from now in season see what's going to happen but Roshan Johnson right now his value has dropped a little bit in ADP not too much compared to where it was at back in October but still, RB28 and ADP could be a cheap buy if you're looking for some upside. But you're probably going to have to do that in startup drafts because he's not very liquid in trade. Because why would I give him away if I got him last year? I know there's upside. I know he's a young player. I like young running backs. Running backs, all they need is the opportunity. And they can go ham. Maybe even just for a few weeks. A good back to have on your roster nonetheless. And that being said, those are 10 players we're looking at for Dynasty Fantasy Football to buy, sell, trade, or hold, whatever you want to do with it but i gave you some information i gave you a little bit of opinion i gave you a little something something so hit that subscribe button stop missing out and i'll catch you on the next video